Shout out one, shout out one. Want to say, want to give our praise and glory, and honor due unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rahakadash. Want to give double honor to the apostles, apostles, elders, and prophets, and no respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the globe, and to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the globe, and uh, to the confusion of faith which join them to our ranks, and the like brothers, also to the Akya and the Aquas that are listening and learning. Uh, to you, I said, Shalom. You know, this is going to be a uh, part two of uh, the false shepherds, false prophets, false teachers, and false pastors. And uh, my bad on part one, you know, I had got a phone call that came in, and what it did, it it, uh, it, it cut off the lesson. You know, I was about to end it, you know, by reading uh, uh, Matthew 23 and 13. But, uh, you know, the, you know, I had got a phone call that came in. And you know how this technology go. You know, once you have a phone call that comes in, they kiss you off your uh, off your lesson. And then it, it ends the lesson right then and there. But, you know, anyway, uh, through the power of spirit, you have by Shimmy House Shot, you know, that we don't have any more interruptions. And we're going to go ahead and stop and pick up where we left off at part one. So this is going to be part two again of the false shepherds, false prophets, false teachers, and false pastors. And and what we left off at was uh, St. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, and the 13th verse. It reads, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shed up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that them, ye them that are entering to go in, and and that's for you false prop, prophets and teachers and pastors and shepherds, man. You know, you shut the key to heaven for yourself, and how you do that? By constantly lying to our people and telling them that, you know, we're not the biblical Israelites, and you also tell them that the RFID, uh, the RFID chip is not the mark of the beast. You're not telling our... You, Tell, you know, you're not telling our people they need to repent and come back to their power, you know. And you do a lot. You you, uh, you uh, go against the true man of the Lord by saying that you know these guys are out of their mind and they don't have the truth, and which we know that they do. You know they are on the highways, byways teaching and, and edifying the men, edifying the hopeful elect, and to wake up the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But you know you you know you shutting up the kingdom of heaven for yourself. And you don't, and not only that, you don't want anybody to go in. How do you do that? By you constantly pushing your false doctrine and your false narratives instead of uh, pushing the scripture. What what uh, does say how about Shimi how shall according to his word according to his scriptures? You know you pushing your own doctrine. You you push your own false doctrine. You know keeping our people from waking up to the truth. And telling them that, you know, America, Babylon the Great is not going to be destroyed. No, America is not going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. You know, you basically, uh, you shutting up the kingdom of heaven by telling our people, you know, that, uh, you know, nothing's going to happen. You know, it's going to be peace and safety here. You know, scripture say, you know, they should say peace, peace, and so destruction. But, you know, you false prophets don't believe in that. You, you don't believe in that. That destruction from you, how about Shimmy, how shot is gonna come and gonna destroy America, Babylon, the Great. You know, 200 million missiles gonna destroy this place and finish it off. But yeah, you know, you got, you know, you got these false pro prophets and teachers and pastors and shepherds. You basically saying that, oh, this, you know, that's not true. That's not the case. You know, America gonna stay. You know, it's gonna be peace here. We just going through a little turmoil right now, but everything gonna go back to normal. You know, all this nonsense. But, you know, you fail to understand that the Most High is going to destroy this place. And and you know that the truth is going forward and you guys are on edge now. You know, you're on edge and that's the reason why, you know, you, you're doing everything you can to try to stop this truth from going forth. And you're shutting up the kingdom of heaven for yourself. And also, you don't want anybody else to go in, which we know that the kingdom of heaven only subscribe to Jake, man, to, uh, you know, the Israelites, you know, you black Latino Native Americans, but, you know, you got, you got our uh, people out there, man, they, uh, 
the false prophets and pastors and shepherds and teachers, you know, they, they saying other things that not they are contrary to the scriptures. You know, uh, moving on, uh, we're gonna have, we got the uh, we're going back to the book of Ezekiel chapter thirty four, and we're gonna start at verse fifteen. You know, it reads, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lay down, said Yahweh, uh, said the Lord God, uh, uh, Yahweh. You know, what that means is that, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, you know, we're not going to study war no more. You know, we, we're going to be able to lay down and none is going to make us afraid. You know, we're going to be re reunited back with Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah. You know, especially the wicked two thirds that are going to be destroyed on this side. You know, he, you know, Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shah is going to write the law in our inward parts, man. He's going to write his law in our inward parts. And, and guess what? We, we're going to be keeping law, statutes, commandments perfectly. And, and that's what that means. You know, we're going to cause the flock to lie down, man. We're going to be able to be at rest. We're going to finally be able to free once Yahweh Shah come back and take down Esau, Edom, and his kingdom and take down these other nations. We're going to experience what true freedom, freedom is all about. You know, and for your false, uh, you know, your false prophets and teachers and shepherds and pastors, man. And y'all, y'all going to see it in that day. That how about Shimmy how Shah is going to come back to gather hope for a lit. And you're going to, you're going to realize that you, you played the fool all this time by teaching our people lies and causing them to be oppressed. And, and you're going to see it in that day. You're going to see that uh, your how about Shem and how shy word is going to stand. And, and you're going to realize that you played the fool. And, you know, and it said, I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down again. Lie down, said the Lord God, you know. Your how shy is going to feed the flock. You know, he's going to feed, you know, he got his prophets feeding the wills and not to understand the truth. And we're going to finally be free. You know, from all this oppression, we're going to experience true freedom and we're going to rule over our oppressors. You know, you know, it says in uh, Isaiah 14, chapter in the second verse. But, you know, continuing on, Ezekiel 34, 16, it reads, I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will feed them with judgment. Right? We're talking about our enemies, man. The Most High gonna send some your house out to, to trample down our enemies, man. And we're gonna destroy them with a, a sword of destruction. And the scripture also say that you know your house shall say that you know those who, who who don't don't want me to rule over them, bring them here to be for for me and slay them. You're going to have a lot of the Israelites that are going to be slain on this side because they, they refuse to want your house shot to reign over them. You know, especially our enemies. You know, they definitely don't want us to reign over them. That's why a lot of them are going to be slain in that day. You know, and, and the Most High is going to uh, bring, he's going to, uh, you know, you know he's going to see that which was lost and how he do that. He does that by, uh, you know, sending the prophets out there, you know, to teach the truth, to get uh, warn the whole for, uh, warn all the Israel to repent and come back to the law, statutes, commandments of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. You know, and you know that, and that's what's going to happen in that day. You know, he's going, he's going, you know, he basically he's going to gather us up, and he's going to bring us back, and, and all the Israel they will scout throughout the four corners of the globe. You know the Most High is gonna bring us back to 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 uh, that place, man. You know the whole for lit, and it go, and and the two thirds that got destroyed on this side. You know, they they gonna be reborn in the kingdom of heaven, and they gonna be living in righteousness. You know, in the scripture also say that all the Israel is gonna be together in the kingdom. You know, roughly paraphrasing, that means even the wicked two thirds that got destroyed on this side. You know, they gonna be reborn in the kingdom of heaven. And everybody that's an Israelite, you know, from the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. All those going to be together. All those going to be with your house, your house and his son, your house shop. And to bring out another scripture, we're going to read, uh, let's see, it's uh, Matthew, the 18th chapter, in the 11th verse. 
It reads, for the Son of Man is come to say that which was lost. And who was lost? And who who needed a Savior to, to who needed your house shall come down and down the cross for? Well, it's the Israelites. You know, the people that are lost are the Israelites. You know, you black, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, that's plain. That do your house shall, you know, die for the, uh, for the uh, children of Israel, you know. Even Christ has said in the scripture that, you know, it was speaking for your house shall to die for that nation. What nation he had to die for? He had to die for the Israelites. Because we was the one that was given the law, statute, and commandments. But our forefathers, you know, they broke the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, they broke the first covenant. So you have, and then they, even though uh, our, our people, you know, gave blood sacrifices, you know, they sacrificed animals, but that wasn't enough to atone for our sins, you know, to atone for, uh, to atone for us. So that reason why your house, so his son, your house shot it down the cross for us. You know, for the Israelites, you know, to redeem us back to your Yahweh, and, and you know, and, and you know that's plain. You know, we we was the one that was lost. We the one, according to Jeremiah, that we discontinued from our heritage. And then also, you know, even though we got discontinued our heritage, you know, it's through the power and spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. You know, through the Ruah Hokadesh. You know, he woke us up through the prophets, man, and and and, and brought everything back to our memories. And the scripture also said that in in the land of our captivity, we're going to remember ourselves. And we're going to remember our power. We're going to remember who we are. We're going to remember that we're Israelites, that we're from the seed line of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know. We're going to remember who we are, and then we're going to come back, you know, come back to our power. That's the reason why these false prophets and teachers and shepherds and pastors, man, they don't want us to come back to our power. Because they know once we come back to our power, they know it's gonna be in the Esau's kingdom. They also know it's gonna be in of them pimping us and the end of them, you know, making you know lucrative money off of us. Because the only thing the church is, the only thing needs the only thing this church is is a business. You know, they don't care about waking up our people. They're not caring to buy, about uh uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, telling our people that are Israelites or telling them that they have to repent and come back to our power. They're not going to do that because, why? Because, you know, pimping the people is very lucrative to them. You know, they don't want to say that which was lost. That reason why your house shall have to die for the Israelites, for for your black, Latino, Native Americans, because, you know, we need a savior because we broke the first covenant. Also, we need your house shot because, you know, we you know, we were lost at one particular point. And you got two-thirds of people that, that are still lost. Even though they know the truth, but they refuse to come back to their power. But I know sorry for rambling on, but, you know, that point had to be brought out. And verse 17, it reads, As for you, O my flock, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I was judged between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the, and the he goats. Seeming a small thing unto you, to have eaten up, eaten up the good pasture, but you know, but ye must tread down your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk the drunk of the deep waters, but ye must ye must follow the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have tried with your feet, and they drunk that which ye have fouled with your feet. And to stop right there and break, you know, to break that scripture down. Now, you got these pastors, you know, they treading over the pastor, you know, they treading over this word, man. You know, they teaching you false doctrine. You know, they, they, uh, they, uh, uh, you know, they trying down to fly with their feet. How they do that? Like I said, you know, by teaching you false doctrine, by not telling you the truth about who you are. You know, they constantly, you know, like I said, you know, they constantly pimping you out. You know, they constantly give you a, a false, false sense of security. By saying that, uh, you know, well, we're going to live in peace and safety. You know, all this is going to blow over and life is going to continue as normal. You know, they're not telling you that, that uh, World War Three is popping off. They're not telling you that they're getting the, the FEMA camps ready to put, you know, they aim to put us black, Latino, Native America in, con in concentration camps. They also, they got the martial arts, martial arts troops ready, you know, and they doing drills. You know, they aiming for, you know, your black, Latinos, Native Americans, man. You know, your Israelites. 
You know, they're gonna round you up in consecration camps and they and they're gonna force you to they're gonna force you to take the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip. They already got it implemented in place. You know, they they doing all types of things, but you know, you need false pastors, prophets and teachers and uh and shepherds, man, they're not they're not preparing our people for that. They're not preparing them spiritually, you know, to repent and come back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, they try they trying to flock down, you know, with you know, with all this uh pollution, man, with all this uh uh um, you know, uh, you know what's it called? They 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 try not to flock down with, you know, a whole bunch of nonsense, man. You know, with all this false doctrine that's going on. What they spearing out of their mouth, you know, they're not teaching them the truth. You know, verse 20 said, thus, Therefore, thus said the Lord God unto them, Behold, I even I will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns until ye have got them broad. You know, that's, you know, our people are spiritually, spiritually diseased because, you know, we have been listening to false doctrine so long, we have listened to false Christianity and all this false doctrine for so long, it, it caused us to spiritually be diseased. It also caused us spiritually be disconnected with our power. You know, it caused, it caused us to be scattered abroad and, and, and what scattered us to the, got us scattered because we worship false gods. We worship gods that were made of wood and stone and and gods that could not see no hear no walk. That's the reason why we got scared in the first place. And, and instead of you know these 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 uh, false pastors, teachers, and prophets and shepherds, you know, telling us truth. The reason why we got scared of, you know, they don't they they don't tell us the truth. They want us to uh, stay scared because it's more lucrative for them to uh, keep us scattered and keep us keep us uh, um, you know keep us down at the bottom because. The, the long we stay at the bottom, the long we stay at the, like I said, the long we stay at the bottom, the more lucrative it, it, uh, it becomes for them. You know, another scripture, you know, uh, St. Luke, the 13th chapter, I'm going to start at the 10th verse. It reads, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and this time about your house, shy. Be, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of firmly 18 years, and was and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Yahweh saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from the, thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified Yahweh. Now get this point. What, this is what a false prophet, false teacher, false pastor, and a false shepherd would do. This next, this, this next uh, verse, verse 14. It reads, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Yahweh Shai had healed on the Sabbath day, and he said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and then therefore, therefore come and and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And this this is what Yahweh Shai said, and, and Yahweh Shai then answered answer him and said, Thou hypocrite, that not each one of you on the Sabbath day, loose his also ass from the stall and lead him away to water it. And, and, and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan had low, had bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? And, you know, I'm going to stop right there. He, you know, he asked that, he asked the ruler a question. He said, in another instant, your house shall say it. That which one of you, you know, if you had a sheep that fell in the, which one of you had a sheep that fell in the pit on the Sabbath day? He said, would you not take, take, uh, take your hand and lift them out of the pit? You know, paraphrasing it. And how I basically told the man, I look, this woman was diseased with a infirmity on on the Sabbath day, you know, and he did a good work by healing this woman of a infirmity that she was bound with for 18 years but this man did not this man was so blinded by keeping the law the law the law the law that he didn't care if this woman would have died on the on the sabbath day and this is what the false prophets teachers and pastors do they don't 
they don't, you know, they, you know, this guy did not see this good work that was done. That this woman got healed on the Sabbath day. Instead of him glorifying Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah for the work that was done, the only thing he think in his mind, oh, it's, it's the Sabbath day. Oh, you can't heal on the Sabbath day. You can't heal on the Sabbath day. And let me, and let me ask you this question. You know, if, if, if you, you know, it's the Sabbath day and your child was sick and your child needed medicine, you know, your child needs a specific medicine to be healed. Would you not go out on the Sabbath day and get that medicine for the child? I'm not telling you that it's okay to break the Sabbath. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to you is that your house, I say, is better to do well on the Sabbath day. Meaning that if your child's sick, your child needs that medicine, you're going to get that child that medicine. Why? Because guess what? It's, 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 it's better to do well on the Sabbath day. And you know, this man, you know, he seen that this woman got healed of her infirmity that she had for 18 years. And this man, and, 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 you know, he only cared about the Sabbath day. He didn't care that this woman was sick to the point of dying. He's just looking at, oh, it's the Sabbath day. You, got, you had six days to heal. Okay. The house shot, I should say, you no. Know, the, uh, the Sabbath day was made for the man and not the man for the Sabbath. Meaning that Yahushua made the Sabbath day for the man for uh, for a week of rest. But being in the land of our captivity, being in the land of our captivity, you know, it, it, you know what I'm saying, it's really impossible to keep the Sabbath. Yeah, we supposed to keep it to the best of our ability. So don't get that messed up thing. Oh, you saying that we shouldn't keep the Sabbath? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, yeah, we keep the Sabbath to the best of our ability, but because we are in Babylon the Great, just because we're in the land of our captivity, it's you know it's hard for us to keep the Sabbath. Why? Because you are the ruler Esau Edom, and, and you have Esau Edom where will call with will have you to work on the Sabbath. You know, he will have you go out and work on the Sabbath. Is you going to tell uh, uh you going to tell Esau Edom where well, I can't work because of Sabbath? And be a dumbass and lose your job? No, of course not. Cause you got to provide for your family, and that's the reason why your house, shy, your house, Bashim house, shy, give us grace. He knows that we're in the land of our captivity. You know, he knows that we are in the land of our captivity, but we keep the Sabbath to the best of our ability. You know, getting back on point that this woman was free from a infirmity that she had for 18 years, and this man, he only. He only could see the Sabbath day. He didn't care that this woman got healed. You know, uh, going to the next group, it's going to be uh, uh, Job chapter 24 and verse 9. It reads, They pluck the fatherless from the breast, and they take the pledge from the poor. And, you know, and that scripture is straight to the point. You know, you know, they uh, uh they afflict the poor, man. You know, how they afflict the poor? By taking everything they got. And, you know, the best example of that is, is going to these Christian churches. And what they do, they they have all these they have all these events going on in this church, which we know is not biblical anyway. You know, they have a Love Day program. They have an Ursha Day program. They have a Pastor and Wife program. They have a Pastor A program. They have a Deacon program. You know, they have... You know, they have a member program. You know, they have all these different programs, you know, and, and what these programs require, you know, they always take up an offering. They always take up some type of money. And then if the money is short, and, and let's just say money is short for the for the power, then they, they go out and say, we know you got 20 more dollars. We know you got 100 more dollars. We know we can get about 250 more dollars, you know. Constantly of afflicting the poor, you know, taking a pledge from the poor, you know, they constantly keep afflicting our people, man. And that's what these false prophets and pastors and teachers and and shepherds do, man. A lot of them do it for filthy lucre, say, you know, they don't, they're not, they're not sparing the flock, you know, as Paul said, you know, they did not, you know, they they come in, you know, they they come in as wolves, you know, they're not sparing the flock, they're not sparing the sheep. You know, they're trying to miracle for everything they got. Another scripture, Psalm 35, 35th chapter and 15th verse, it reads, But in my 
but in my app every day rejoice they guide themselves together yea they object they object uh objects guided themselves together against me and i knew or not and they did tear me and seize not and that's what these false prophets do they they guide themselves against the true men of the lord they guide themselves against the people that are waking up to the truth and you know and they, and they want to go in they want to separate you know the men of the lord they want to separate israel to keep us divided because they know within themselves you know they know that uh uh you know we stay divided like i said you know we stay divided the long they could stay in babylon the great because beyond these false prophets teach the shepherds and uh pastors you know they love this place man they love weakness you know they love to be indulged in weakness and that's all they hard to set on is weakness they don't care to trying to do righteous you know and besides how about shimmy how shy has not chosen them anyway could they repent yeah, they could repent. It, it's up to y'all by Shimmy how shot to accept them. Yes, they could repent. But but if they gonna do it, no, a lot of them are not gonna repent. Why? Because it you know some lot of y'all by Shimmy how shot to, to destroy them. You know. Okay, we at verse uh, twenty-two. You know, it said, Therefore I, I therefore what I say in my flock, they shall no more be a prey. I was just between cowder and cowder. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. We know that's talking about Yahweh, Shah. You know, continuing on, it said, And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, I the Lord, have spoken it. And that's talking about in the kingdom. You know, Yahweh, Shah is going to be the chief ruler, you know, over Israel. Then David's going to be under him, and then you're going to have the the whole for left, the 144,000, and you know, 144,000, which are the chief men, gonna be presiding over all of Israel, you know. And then, then you're gonna have the rest of Israel that's gonna be ruling over the other nations, but the rest of the, uh, the Israelites gonna be under the, the 144,000, which 144,000 gonna be under King David, and King David gonna be under Yahweh, and Yahweh is gonna be under Yahweh, you know. That's, that's, how that, that's how the order gonna go. And it's going to be like that in the kingdom of heaven. So, so you false prophets and teachers and pastors and shepherds, y'all might as well get used to it. This, this is how the order going to go. You know, you know, it's going to be everything. When your house shall come back and take down Esau Edom's kingdom, your house shall is going to restore that order which he had at the first. You know, if you're spiritual enough, you will receive it. If you're not spiritual enough, hey, it's not meant for you to get it on this side. Verse 25, it reads, And I will make make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell in safety in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them a place round about my head a blessing. And I will come to come and I will cause the shower to come down in his season, and there shall be a shower of blessings. And and the tree of the fruit of field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be be safe in their land, and they shall know I am the Lord. And when I have broken the, the bands of their yoke and delivered it out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them, right? And they're talking about you know the Israelites, man. We're gonna be broken of them bonds, man. We're gonna be broken of you know from our oppression, uh, you know Esau, even so called white man in these other nations, man. You know, another precept go to uh, Ezekiel 34 and 27. It's Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 through 4. And this was, and this is going to happen. In the, this, this, these things are going to happen in the kingdom, man. It, it reads, And he showed me a pure, a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, there was a tree of life which bare twelve mounds of fruits, and yielding her fruit every month, and the leaves were of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and they shall be no more cursed. You know, for the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve them, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be written in their foreheads. And it's talking about Israelite, and it's talking about in the kingdom of heaven. 
you know, everything's going to, the earth is going to go back to its natural order. You know, it's, the earth is going to have to be cleansed and purified from all the sin and wickedness that comes from Esau, even the so-called white man. You know, that, that it's gonna, the earth is going to be purified. The earth is not going to be destroyed, but it's going to be cleansed. You know, America, Babylon, and Great is going to be wiped off the face of the planet. You know, it's going to be wiped out. And then, you know, your house, you know, it's going to, you know, they're going to take the earth and it's going to be cleansed. You know, and, and this is after, you know, Esau Edom is taken down and and uh, and uh, the kingdom of heaven is going to be ushered in and the, and the other nation is going to rebuild our kingdom. And, and after a thousand years, you know, uh, Esau, is gonna, Esau Edom is going to be wiped out. And then all the other nations are going to be in the kingdom, but they're not going to be among the Israelites. But they still gonna be serving us if we get if we understand that. Verse twenty eight, it reads, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Not that the beasts of the land shall devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. They're talking about the Israelites, you black Latinos, Latinos and Native Americans. You know, you, you ain't gonna be no. It's no long. You no longer gonna be a prey to the heathen. That means that you're not. You're no longer gonna be. You know, serving your oppressors. Guess what? Your oppressors gonna be buying down to you. They gonna be serving you in the kingdom. You know, they gonna they gonna be under you, and they gonna be forced to keep our laws, statutes, and commandments. You know, uh, you know, through power. You know, they gonna they gonna be forced to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shimei Hashah. Because Scripture says, if they refuse to keep them, you know, they, you know, it it it, it will not be any rain. You know, they're going to be forced to keep our law, statute, and commandments because they're, well, we're going to be ruling over them with a the rod of iron. You know, according to uh, 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 Isaiah the 14th chapter. You know, you can read that yourself. You know, verse 29, he said, And I raise up for them a plan of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. For the... Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, said the Lord God. And and ye, my flock, and the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, said the Lord God. You know that that that's plain. You know your house is gonna come back. He's gonna take down. The, he's gonna take down Esau, Edom. He's gonna take down his kingdom. And and uh, he's gonna uh, put all the other nations, those who survived the, the, the nuclear destruction, he, he, the rest of the nation who survived nuclear destruction, because we know the American Babylon the Great is gonna be destroyed. You know those who you know those who uh, destroy, uh, describe nuclear destruction that are left here. Your house are gonna, gonna have the men of the Lord to round them up, and they're gonna be put in slavery. And they're going to rebuild our kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven. And, and then once the kingdom of heaven is established, and once we be in rulership, and, and guess what? It, it won't be no more change on the guard. And what I mean by that, it, you know, it's not going to be another kingdom that's going to take down the kingdom of heaven. That's going to take down your house, child. Because your house, child, is going to subdue all the nation under his feet. You know, that's the reason why you see a lot of chariot activity going on. That's the reason why you see that the the uh the chariots, you know, they they exercise, they get prepared for the battle of Armageddon, they get prepared for, to fight, you know, in the valley of Jehoshaphat. You know, it's gonna be a worldwide battle. You know, the main battle's gonna be in the valley of Jehoshaphat in the Middle East. You know, all the other nations are gonna be there fighting against one another. But how shall I gonna return? He gonna gather up his hopeful elect and everybody else that that, that not of the hopeful elect that have not got taken up to the chariot is gonna be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, especially here in Babylon the Great here in America. And and also, you know, the other nation, you know, they some of them gonna there's gonna be some survivors, you know, even though even the elite gonna survive. But guess what? The elite gonna be rounded up and they gonna be put into slavery. You know, and uh that's gonna urge you in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to urge in, you know, uh, Israel is going to be ruling, going to be back on top, and the earth is going to be, the earth is going to, to be refreshed, it's going to be revived, it's going to be renewed, and everything's going to go back to the way it was in the beginning, 
you know, and, and, and it won't be no more saying we won't have to study war no more. Esau Edom going to do a thousand years of hardcore slavery along with the other nation, but Esau Edom is going to be round up and they're going to be done away with. And then that's going to be the end of that and, and we're going to be ruling in righteousness. You know, we're going to have the laws who are Israelites, we're going to have the laws within us. And the law, and we're going to keep the laws because the laws are going to be written in our inward parts. So that way we won't be sinning, that way we won't be going off, and, that, and we're going to be enjoying the bliss. You know, we're going to be enjoying the true freedom in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be enjoying the presence of your house, y'all. And, and, uh, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be talking about, you know, the time that your house, y'all, came back and delivered deliver the hope for it. You know, deliver us from, from uh, the hand of Esau, Edom, and the other nations. And, and it's going to be talked about forever, man. It's going to be. The scripture says it's going to be a memorial forever because it's not, it, this, this Esther does is going to be so great. You know, for the hopefully 144,000 one-third, it's going to be so great to the point that, uh, um, you know, the scripture says, it, you know, they're not going to talk about the Esther that was in Egypt. They're going to be talking about the Esther coming from the north, man, from North America, from the other nations. You know, we're we going to be talking about that, man. And that's going to be remembered forever. You know, I pray that this lesson will edify, and you know, and to your faith pastor, your faith teachers and prophets and shepherds, man, that you continue. If you out here, you deceiving the people. The Most High is gonna destroy you, man, unless you repent and come back to your power, your high by Shem and Shah. But we know that you know that a lot of y'all are not gonna repent. So the Most High is gonna destroy you with a sword of destruction because you have uh, scouted his sheep. And, and, and you know, and you taking it, you taking the the ignorance of our people for granted. Instead of waking them up, telling them who they are, and yet you still out here continue to peep, uh, pimp out the people. So you're gonna be destroyed on this side. You're gonna be. And I'm talking to you Israelites, man. I'm not. I ain't worried, I ain't talking about the other nation because we know that the other nation, man. We know that they they don't got salvation. Period. You how about Shem how shall I not deal with them? But I'm talking to you false pastors, you false teachers, you false prophets, and you false shepherds. Y'all gonna be destroyed. They say you how about Shem how shall? You know that's it for a lesson. I wanna say all praises to the Most High. You how about Shem how shall? By Hashem Rahakadash. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and prophets. Another respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the globe. Until next time, how willing? Shadow one and a bob a bob.